Bye, baby. Bye, honey. See you later. Yep. Okay, bye. Okay, see you. Uh-huh, bye. Bye. We each have our own separate rooms. I, of course, have the captain's quarters, but she has the uh, guest quarters. But this room's obviously bigger. Yeah. Seems like husband's struggling. Yeah, just a little bit. Well, yeah. hang on a second. Seems like we're struggling. Oh, yeah. Fix your heart. <laughs> it's always better when it's turned off to the side. It helps kind of motivate me. Yeah, and try to make this hot stick <laughs> always. <laughs> okay. All right. Welcome back to another exciting and thrill-filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. Okay, maybe that was a little over the top. Anyways, we'll go ahead and get our next video started. Welcome back, guys. So this week's episode, we're continuing removing aft cabin port lights and seems like husband's struggling. Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, yeah. hang on a second. It seems like we're struggling. Oh, yeah. Fix your heart. <laughs> it's always better when it's turned off to the side. It helps kind of motivate me. Those aft cabin port lights, I mean, if this is an indicator of things to come, this boat has 16 of those on here and uh, none of them are going to be easy. Everyone's sealed in with 5200, so uh, note to self, we won't put them back with 5200. And also, we're working on replacing broken hose clamps on dripless shaft, so... Yeah, so we have to, you know, when we uh, first bought the boat, we realized that the broken, the shaft seal boot has all the hose clamps, or most of them are broken, rusted, ready to break, and if we ever decide to put this boat in the water, we need to have those clamps replaced with new stainless marine hose clamps on there, so because if uh, we want to keep the water out, those clamps need to be good. Starting to cut new replacement teak panels for the aft cabin area, so that's going to be fun. I'm going to use, try to use old ones as templates to make the new ones, and hopefully that'll go well. It's a first. I've never done anything like that before, so we're going to learn as we go. And hey, teak's cheap, so if we mess it up, we can start over again, right? Right. Yeah, so anyways, that's what we got going on for this episode, so stay tuned. Enjoy the video. Yeah, and try to. So today, I'm going to focus on... I'm um, trying to get these port lights right here out. I'd like to get this uh, plywood off here. Got to get all these staples out, which, oh my gosh, that takes forever just right there all on its own. But um, yeah, so right here, these staples, I don't know if that makes it easier to see or not. But anyways, yeah, all those got to come out. I'm not sure right here if all this has to come out. Probably so. Whatever it takes to make it more difficult. But that's all right. No complaints. We're enjoying it. And then uh, this is what we did last week. Got all that plywood out. And um, we're going to put a small layer of insulation in here 
before we put the next the new layer of plywood back on. I'm gonna go ahead and insulate that. Uh, looks like there was some kind of repair done right there at some point. It looks like somebody uh, may have cut the window opening a little bigger than they needed to. I'm not sure, but anyways, gonna fix that a little bit better. Um, we'd like to get this port light here removed in the plywood as well and as you can see it's got the uh, staples all along it also so that's the plan and uh, hopefully we can get all that done um, I'd like to do the repair on the fiberglass on the outside there you can see the spots where the uh, the light shining through a little bit more than uh, the rest of it that's where it's pulled away the fiberglass on the outside so anyways that's the plan that's the goal for today. Let's see what happens later. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this light fixture right here. It's not working anyway, so I'm gonna remove it and uh, see if we can find something to replace it with that looks a little bit, a little bit nicer. And if not, then we'll just replace the bulbs in it and figure out why it's not working. But for now, I'm just gonna take it out and uh, we'll set it aside and see if there's something we can find that's a little bit nicer, newer looking, but. If not, then like I said, we'll just put it back and no problem. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this light fixture. And part of the reason why we wanna get this fixture out of here is we need to remove the box the light fixture is hooked up to. And we wanna also see about replacing this light fixture with something better. Cause when th this one here actually doesn't even work, I think the bulbs are burned out in it. But even when they are, uh, there's another one in the boat that has new bulbs in it still doesn't put out that much light so we're just going to go ahead and replace it um, but we'll remove it first so we can see what size and everything it is and then try to find something comparable to fit that hole because i don't like to cut new holes in this so we'll see how it goes if not we'll make something new okay up next we got to remove these two port lights here in order to get the teak panel off and in order to get that teak panel off we got to get that white box housing that the light fixture was mounted in. So it's just like a puzzle all over again. Here we go. Bye, baby. Bye, honey. See you later. Yeah. Okay, bye. See you. Okay, see you. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. We each have our own separate rooms. I, of course, have the captain's quarters, but she has the uh, guest quarters. But this room's obviously bigger. All right, well, we got that that cover off, the cap cover, whatever you want to call it. And this is what it looks like underneath. Everything under here looks good. So nothing to be concerned about here. Not sure what the writing's for there, but uh, it's very thick glass. Yeah, pretty interesting. I doubt this has been on for a while. But um, this light here, I'll see if I can replace a bulb in it or if I can find a, a LED replacement for that. But um, I think I'm going to add a light right here that will shine down and light the walk, the entrance way here. I think it will be nice. And then... Um, Maybe the light that goes here will put a switch on it so I can turn that on or off. But yeah, we'll do some options there. It'd be cool. Okay, now that the light box mounting housing, whatever you want to call that, has been removed, now we can get ready to finish up removing the port lights and then we'll be able to pull down the teak panels and start seeing what we got going on underneath those panels. We know the panels are rotted, but we want to see what the structure, the fiberglass structure looks like underneath.
right. Well, that came off easy. As you can see, there's lots of uh, water intrusion right here, all the way around. And a ton, 5200 seal all the way through here. So, all right, well, that's gonna take care of that. That's the easiest one so far. And the window just about fell out on the other side of the port light, it just about fell out. So yeah, that'll be, It'll be easy one there. All right, good deal. Okay, we're wrapping up the aft cabin port light removal on this boat finally, yay. Man, what a struggle. 5200 is not our friend on this boat. So just note to self, we will not be bedding these back in with 5200. We'll find something else to do it, but we're not gonna go that route. It's damaged a lot of the fiberglass and gel coat around these cutouts, so we just don't wanna repeat that again later on down the road. But uh, yeah, we're getting close, so here we go. We have the rest of them removed, and so we can start moving on with taking out the rest of the teak panels and getting this aft cabin tore apart so we can see what we need to do to put it back together. What do we got going on here? Uh, nothing. Helping out, baby? Yep. Good job. You good job. Look at that. You can get that. Careful now, don't catch yourself. Yeah, so we got... That port light, this one out, and then the two back ones. And let's see, we got another one. Let's see, we got those out from another time. And then got this one out today also. And that one's to the bathroom, so we're not gonna pull that one today. But yeah, not bad. What she's doing right there, she's trimming all the excess 5200 seal that's around all the port light cutouts. Uh, and then like after she's done with that, then I'm gonna go around it and seal with the, I'll add the fiberglass layers on the inside to thicken up the structure around where the screw holes are at. So, yep, more come later. Here today is, uh, if you look here, all these screw holes where the uh, port lights were mounting, well, they're all stripped out. The screws won't hold. They've been taken in and out a couple of times, it looks like. And uh, they just they just don't fit anymore. So my plan is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to fiberglass around here to build up a little bit thicker structure. And then I'm going to drill these out. And I'm going to fill them with uh, thickened epoxy. And make them... Give the thread something to hold on to. But if you also notice, like right here, right here, right here... Well, not that one, but some of these um, holes are from, it looks like they had different port lights mounted here at one time. So same there, same there. And uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill all those up, like I said, and then I'll draw an outline of the where the port light's supposed to go and I'm gonna drill new holes and fill them with thickened epoxy. And after building up the fiberglass around here, I'm just gonna put a, one real thick layer of fiberglass, you know, a thick one layer of uh, heavy cloth. And I'll do the same thing there, same thing there, and same thing there. And that way, uh, it's going to give the mounting fasteners some, a little bit of structure to hold on to, because right now they're just, they were just barely holding those port lights in. I think the only thing that was really holding them in was the seal, which was 5200. So, yeah, and uh, they, um, they came out they came out pretty easy the screws just pulled right out so if you look right here so this is what it this is what it looked like before we took it apart and uh, this is another one we're going to be tackling but what i want to do is i want to i want to finish the back bedroom first because i don't want to have a bunch of projects tore apart on here so we'll tear we'll finish all the modifications we want to do here and we'll get this all back together and then we'll We'll start tackling some of that other stuff forward all later. It, it'll happen, but I just don't want to have it all. I don't want to have the whole boat tore apart all at one time. So, but um, yeah, you can see right here that's gonna go. I think I have enough teak that I'm going to teak plywood um, that I'm gonna go ahead and I'll use those as templates. I'll make them a little bit larger than they need to be. 
and then I'll hand fit them on the boat here. But yeah, I think I'm gonna take those down and uh, take those home and we'll make, use those for templates. Okay, with the teak panels removed from the aft cabin, we can use these as templates to cut the new teak panels and we'll use them as patterns. It'll work out really good and we'll show you what they look like through the process. Okay, so we got some fiberglass cut up into strips and small pieces and our hope is to thicken up the structure around the screw holes where the port light screws are going through because all those holes are stripped out and so we want to thicken that structure up and then also we want to fill those holes with uh, thicken epoxy and then we'll we'll drill them uh, we'll actually open up the holes a little bit larger than they need to be fill them with thicken epoxy and then open them back up with the uh, right size hole for the screw that wants to go that we need to put in there and um, we're hoping that we'll have good threads again for the screws to hold the port lights in you can see where I added some fiberglass here so what I want to do now is pop that off and uh, Sand it, ferret, you know? Yeah, so it's, it's very strong. So it definitely held, which is cool. This one's a little bit thicker up here, but down here it's good, it's on the outside, so it'll be all right. Okay, if you look closely, you can see where I added some fiberglass to thicken up the structure on the outside of the hull, where the port lights were mounted, and they tore away uh, some of the fiberglass and gel coat with the 5200 when we were prying them off, so it just, flat out ripped it off ripped down to fiberglass uh, threads and everything so fibers and so we're gonna build that back up with this fiberglass and then we'll use uh, filler over the top of that and then gel coat but yeah we just want to get it filled in for now so everything's even when we put the port lights back in so just in case you're wondering what it looks like on the areas outside the port lights where we're adding that extra fiberglass to thicken things back up this is a pretty good example of what happens when we're pulling the port lights off. The 5200 is just tearing everything with it. And I know some people have suggested to use a heat gun, but a lot of these suggestions come after the fact, after we've already done this and already ripped them off. But we have 16 port lights total on this boat that we're going to need to remove, not to mention all the large opening hatches as well. So we'll get the opportunity to try out that heat gun uh, practice in the future. So we'll see how it goes later. I'm going to try and remove this glass from right here. So what I have to do is I have to break the seal, basically cut out the seal that's around here. And I'll be using several different tools. I'm gonna to use the uh, exact, the box knife here. I'll have all these uh, nice, this pick set here. These are all really good for doing this kind of stuff. And uh, each one of them will play a little part in me uh, getting to the point where I can get this seal out of here and um, get, eventually get the glass out. And I would like to get the glass out in one piece. And yes, it is actually glass. Um, another thing we'll have to do is get the seal, the O-ring out of here. Um, having a hard time finding that. So I went ahead and ordered some stuff that looks like a close second that will hopefully um, do the job that this seal once was doing. But if you see on inside the window here, it's got all this, uh, there's two pieces of glass that are put together and they have some kind of a adhesive in the middle here. And uh, anyways, it's just, it's just all, you know, you can't get rid of this anymore. It's just, it's in there. So that's the plan. We're gonna work on getting this out of here. So, so what I'll start by doing is just uh, slowly using the pick set here. I'm working my way around, trying to make a way in to start, uh, breaking this seal loose.
we'll just keep going on this until until we get there okay so after lots of careful scraping careful cutting with the knife all that I was trying to be really careful and I actually uh, cracked this glass I thought I would be you know a little more careful this time but yeah it didn't happen but we're getting close to getting it out <laughs> Here we go. All right. There you have it. You can see lots of cracks, lots of chips in the glass, but it's out. And in fact, it's so out that it's even all the way out. Wow. Well, you can tell, that tells you right there, this window was not sealed in there very good at all. Cause I didn't even, I didn't even work on I didn't even work on trying to cut that seal out yet. Huh. Well, that just goes to show that this was not, not sealing. So that's why we had leaks. Yeah, so that's what we're going to keep doing. We only have to do it 14 more times. So we'll just keep working on it. Another thing we want to do here is we're DIY and so we want to do it ourselves as much as possible and we want to rebuild these port lights and they don't look too complicated so we should be able to figure this out. So what we want to do is we want to disassemble them and find out what we need to do to rebuild these back as good as new if not better. And so the lenses on these are actually all cracked and crazed and discolored and you can't see out of them very well. So we're going to go ahead and pull them apart and separate the lens from the frame and the seals and then we'll scrape and clean everything up and see what we have here and then if we can get a good lens we can use that as a pattern to cut our new one and slowly start putting these back together but first thing we need to do is get them all apart get the seals out clean all that black sealant out of there and figure out what's a good size good color for the lens do we want to go back clear or do you want to have a smoke lens like the, what came out of there? And so this is what it looked like when we got it all taken apart. These are the components that we'll need to source to put back together and make it good as new again. Finding that rubber seal is going to be a bit challenging. One of the other projects we wanted to tackle today was this broken hose clamp that we found on the uh, propeller shaft bellows. And we want to replace that. In fact, we want to replace all the hose clamps that are on there with brand new marine grade stainless steel hose clamps but yeah we found that when we were looking at the boat right after we purchased it and we know that when we want to splash we need to have this ready to go okay so I just replaced the clamps here on the bellows here and uh, I think this is a dripless but I'm not sure but isn't there supposed to be a hose coming off of this See where this, there's a fitting up here. I thought there was supposed to be a hose coming off of that, but I'm not sure. So, we'll see what happens, but I guess it's been like this for a while, so. But yeah, these clamps were, uh, clamps were ready to break anyways. One of them was broken, so I replaced all four of them. And then, uh, yeah, it looks like there's uh, bonding straps here, and they go to the bonding plates that are on the bottom of the hull. But um, this one here, I'm sure they're all in the same condition. They all look like they need to be replaced. I'm thinking about replacing them with uh, copper copper cables. I don't know, just, uh, just an idea for now. Anyways, that's done. 
So now you can see the bellows here have four brand new marine grade stainless steel hose clamps on them and they're doubled up so there's two on each end and that's the way you're supposed to do it in the marine environment because if one fails then the other one is hopefully going to be the backup. So anyways we got that done so we can check that one off the list. Finally we got something done. Up next another thing we want to try and track down are the battery switches. I think that they're going to be underneath the seat cushion here. So we're going to lift this up and see what's underneath. Hopefully they'll be there. And we're going to find out what's going on under here. Hopefully, with any luck, we find our battery switches. So let's see what's going on. All right, what do we have here? It says refrigerator schematic, inboard, aft, forward. Okay, so let's see. Maybe we're in luck. Uh, no schematic. Okay, so here's what we're looking for. Let's see here. Whoa. Definitely no battery switch there, but that is very interesting. So that looks like fuel manifold right there. That's pretty cool. Had no idea that was in here. I was seriously expecting to be battery switches. And then looks like we got, let's see here. Looks like we got a battery charger and we got some batteries, but man, still no battery switch. Oh no, it looks pretty dry in here, so that's a good thing. But hmm, that is not. That's good. I'm glad we found that, but that's not what we we're looking for. All right, well, those things are elusive, man. I can, I just can't believe. So me, so looks like we got four. We got four six volt batteries here. Okay, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, dang. Hopefully, we can fit some nice uh, lithium batteries in here at some point down the road, but that's a long ways down from now. All right, so we'll keep looking. No battery switches in here, but fuel manifolds. So we'll have to remember that. And there was no schematic, but that's okay. We'll just put it all back together. Nice. So we consider this a pretty good score, anyways, because we found this fuel manifold the fuel manifold control switches are in there and that's a big plus that is really nice they're all labeled nice and the battery banks uh charger is in there and of course the batteries are in there so at least we know where the next battery bank is at and this one's in a better spot than in the keel that's for sure we did find this battery diagram underneath one of the other floorboards so this was on the bottom side of one of the center floorboards and it just shows the battery hookups and all that but it doesn't show any battery switches on that schematic so uh, either they forgot to add them or there are none so and I'm beginning to think there's none due to some of the staining that's showing up around the mast on the interior of the boat we're assuming that there's going that there's some leaks around the base of the mast up on the deck so we're up here taking a look at this there's a little bit of moisture on there just be from from the weather and it's puddling on there so you can see that right there that it's clearly puddling has nowhere to go. I'm wondering if there should be a mast boot on here. It looks like they use Spartite to seal or stabilize the mast in place, but do you think there should be a mast boot on this mast or is Spartite alone enough to stop it from leaking and we just maybe need to replace the Spartite? What do you think? Please let us know. Do we need a mast boot on here or do we just need to replace the Spartite? Thanks. Okay, so up next, we want to take that aft cabin teak panel, the one that was rotted under the port lights in the very back that the uh, surveyor said was a rotted bulkhead. We want to take this one and we're going to use it as a template to make a new one. So we're laying it out over the teak plywood right now to see how it all, we want to match it up with the grain and everything so we get the grain going the right direction. All right, here we are. We're cutting the, uh, setting up to cut out the back aft cabin uh, plywood headliner that goes uh, where the two top aft cabin windows are, port lights. And uh, so what I did is I clamped it down, I've outlined it, no straight edges here, so. Um, and then I marked all the holes where everything's going to be located. <clears throat> and then once I get it cut, I'll go ahead and put all those holes all the way through so everything, everything should line up where it came out before. 
but you know as you can see this uh this new teak here has a lot of lines in it where the old one looks like it's i don't know all one piece of grain so oh well no big it's what we can get i mean stuff wasn't cheap it's over 240 dollars a sheet and it's only a quarter inch thick so <gasps> anyways that's what we're gonna have to put in there so it'll look nice once it's done but uh, it's not perfect match anyways we'll get it cut out in case you're wondering what the duct tape's for that's to hold the pieces that are really rotted into place because when we took it off it was falling apart under its own weight all right so we got the rough shape cut out and uh that turned out all right it turned out pretty good so now we'll just fine tune it a little bit and then once we get it brought back to the boat i'll get some sanding blocks and stuff because i know we're gonna have to fine tune it even more then but what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna match up all the holes here with the uh, with the old pattern clamp it all together and then uh, i'm gonna start working on getting these cutouts here for the port lights and we'll just keep going keep getting it to where where it's all set up to where we need it to be so let's come along okay so you can see the new versus the old sitting side by side there the new one still doesn't have the port light cutouts cut out of it yet but we'll get to that next that's pretty simple to do with the router but yeah there they are laying side by side new one looks a lot better than the old one did that's for sure so here we are with the cutouts for the port lights cut out it's starting to take shape starting to look like that panel that we want to go back in there and then here it is with one of the port lights sitting in there no varnish but it's already starting to look like a thing of beauty already so we're feeling good about what we're doing progress is being made and that's always a good thing so we're going to take the knowledge we gained from cutting out that large half cabin uh, teak panel and we're going to try it on the same smaller side panels that go in the aft cabin as well so here we go we're getting those cut out roughing them rough cutouts for now and then we'll do a final trim and uh, do an edge cutter with the router to get these to be an exact fit so all we have to do is locate holes and as long as we did everything locating right it's going to go right in perfect fit no trimming nothing all right thanks for watching guys thank you stay tuned stay tuned for next time if you're not subscribed yet subscribe down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya. Now there's a nice looking shell. I'd keep that one. And what's that? My idea. Oh, we got a boat coming. It's this guy. Nice. Dang. Five engines on the back. That was sweet.